Yo, what's up, Surper Squad? Tanner here, and I'm back with another experimental build. I've had this tiered container sitting around collecting dust for quite a while now. As I was looking for inspiration, I decided to turn this into a cohesive two tier setup one that includes a terrarium and one that includes a semi aquatic setup. The idea I had with this two tier container was to create the illusion that one element goes through two different environments. You'll see what I mean as we journey through this build. The element I have that will span through the containers is a gnarly piece of spider wood. As it stands, this piece is far too detailed and branchy for what I have imagined. To get a more manageable branch, I trimmed it down with some wire cutters. My thought is that this branch could be combined with other elements to mimic the look of a mini tree growing through two different worlds. To ensure the tree stands at a nice angle, I marked the base and trimmed it down with a saw. After that I set the branch on two poker chips to account for the thickness of the glass and marked for the separation between the containers. Using this mark I separated the pieces with a scroll saw. With the spider wood cut to pieces, it can be placed into the containers. I started by using hot glue to attach the bottom portion of the tree to the lower container. After letting the glue dry, I put the upper container in place. The top portion of the tree didn't fit, so it was trimmed down further. Once the accommodations were met, it too was attached to the base of the container with hot glue. As you can see though, the piece was still too large and the lid wouldn't close. The branches were trimmed for a third and final time. My original idea for this build, to set it apart from similar ones I've done in the past, was to use Ficus pumila quercifolia to mimic tree leaves. With cuttings that have healthy roots and humid conditions, these vines would eventually root onto the spider wood and create a dense canopy of foliage. What I did was tie the ficus onto the wood with sewing thread. This will discreetly hold the ficus in place while it roots onto the wood. Using this technique, I covered the majority of branches with vines. I also hot glued this and a smaller branch into the top container. From there I got some black sand to create my false bottom. Due to the nature of this build, I had to keep it simple, which is why I'm using just sand. I poured some into each container and used a fan brush to even everything out. A layer of activated carbon was added in the same way. After that I pulled out a bin of my custom substrate mix. It's composed of cocoa fiber, orchid bark, sphagnum moss, charcoal, and sand. I added a very thin layer of this to each of the containers. I'm not planting these with much other than moss, so a thick layer wasn't needed. With those layers in place, I lined the bottom of both containers with a carpet of fern moss. However, after all was said and done, I decided against this idea and emptied the top container to start over. I began to troubleshoot and experiment with other ideas. Eventually I decided to remove the ficus from the branches entirely. With all the experimentation involved to this point, I just felt that any longer and the vines would wither away, being lost altogether. So I took them off and put them back into my propagation bin. I later decided to add a glob of super glue where the branches attached to the container. I piled on some garnet sand and built up a mound around a stick. This gives the appearance of a tree growing up out of a pile of dirt. The same technique was also used on the larger stick. Once dry, the glue left behind a residue that I scraped off with a razor blade. After all was said and done, I ended up with the bones for the two-tier terrarium. As you can see, it really gives the illusion that the tree is going up through two separate areas. However, I decided that the lower container was lacking in its current state. It too was dismantled and cleaned out. I turned the top container upside down and hot glued the bottom part of the trunk to the underside. 
Then the containers were put together and marked for the trunk on the bottom of the container. Once marked, I pulled the containers apart and used the super glue technique from earlier to secure the stick to the bottom of the lower container. Once again, here's a look at the tree going through the containers. Let's set them up again, starting with the bottom container. First with the black sand false bottom, then the charcoal layer, and lastly the substrate mix. Now we can finally hardscape. For this one I'm using various sizes of sandstone. These are placed on the left and right sides of the scape for a simple layout. I'm just trying to build up some land and add texture. I'm not being very particular about the placement of the stones. I also sprinkled in some fine gravel for texture. As you can see, I left a path of bare substrate in between the rocks. I covered this area with garnet sand. I chose this sand because it's fine and the color resembles dirt. You'll see later on why I wanted this look. After I evened out the sand with my brush, I added more stones to finalize the scape. More sand was sprinkled in to make the path more apparent. For the bottom terrarium, I'm planting it simple with star moss, hypnum moss, haircap moss, sphagnum moss, and liverwort. I placed them throughout the stones on the left and right. Everything was planted in a way that creates nice, natural looking differences in texture. All of the short mosses are near the front of the scape and the taller ones in the back. In doing this I made sure to plant taller items near the end of the trail. This gave the illusion that it keeps going beyond the container's edge. Once all of the mosses were situated, I sprinkled in some coarse sand. Since the garnet sand is so fine, these grains of sand look like really small stones. From there I filled up a dish with dechlorinated water and used a pipette to hydrate all of the plants and water down the scape without making a mess. The scape is almost there, but it needs just a few more detail elements. First up were some smaller spiderwood branches. My goal with these was to make it look like a branch fell off the tree. It broke into a few pieces, but one of the branches was covering the trail. That piece was dragged to the other side by hikers, and all that remains on the trail is some debris. To further make it look like this was a hiking trail, I used various tools to make indents that look like footprints. To finalize this terrarium for real, I added some springtails. As I've explained countless times, these are not necessary, but they really help combat mold that could be detrimental to the terrarium. They are especially good in setups with spiderwood because it's really prone to molding when first put into a setup. Anyway, here's the finalized bottom portion of the design. I really like how it turned out. Much like nature, it tells a story without saying any words. Now then, let's finish the top portion of the setup. Again, I really think the ficus would have looked awesome in this setup, but I'll save that for a future build. Instead, I used fern moss for the tree foliage. It's working really well in a build I did a few weeks ago, and I figured it would look good in this one. Once it was planted throughout the branches, I trimmed it down for a cleaner aesthetic. All of the trimmings were of course removed and added back into the moss propagation bins. To complete the setup, I partially filled it up with some dechlorinated water. Lastly, I added some floating plants to the water surface, including duckweed and salvinia minima. Naturally, after all of that, the container was sealed up. And there you have it. I don't know exactly what to call it, but we'll go with a two-tier tree terrarium and pond. This is one of the more challenging builds I've done in quite a while. I'm not sure why, but there was a lot of troubleshooting involved that I didn't anticipate. I'm glad to have finally pulled it off though. 
Initially I was going to make two different terrariums, but I thought that the water on top made for a more interesting design. It also worked out because having the top container filled with substrate shaded the bottom portion and made it harder to view. I also think that this will look much better as it matures. Most of the moss I used on the tree was undergrowth, so it's not as green as it will be in the future. All in all though, this was a really fun and experimental build. I'm very interested in doing something like this on a larger scale that could be more detailed and include livestock. Not sure that I will anytime soon, but it's certainly an idea. Anyway, that's all for now. As always, I thank you so much for watching and for your continued support. Let me know what you thought about the build down in the comments. As always, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.